Good evening once again. I'm Stephanie Rule. It is a question we ask on this program every time we report on the latest outbreak of gun violence. When are we going to do something to solve for this uniquely American problem? That question has become even more urgent over the last week, one where we have seen an alarming series of shooting involving peeping people who made simple mistakes, just doing stuff we do every single day, but they were met with bullets. The latest in North Carolina late yesterday, a man allegedly fired at his neighbors after a basketball rolled into his yard. Six-year-old Kingsley White and her dad were both shot and wounded. We, of course, reported on Kansas City teenager Ralph Yarl, who was shot in the head and the arm last week when he rang the wrong doorbell, picking up his brothers. He is now recovering at home. And over the weekend, 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis and her friends just pulled into the wrong driveway in New York. She was shot dead when the homeowner opened fire at the car. And Texas cheerleaders Peyton Washington, seen here, and Heather Roth, were shot after mistakenly getting into the wrong car outside of a grocery store early Tuesday. Peyton was critically injured. And as one guest told us last night, hair trigger justice now seems to be almost the norm. And there's another deeply troubling element to all of this. And it relates to the shooting of young Ralph Yarl. The grandson of the 84-year-old man charged in that shooting put it this way. I feel like a lot of people of that generation are caught up in this uh, 24-hour news cycle of fear and, and paranoia perpetuated by some other news stations. And he was fully into that, sitting and watch uh, Fox News all day, every day, blaring in his living room. And I think that stuff really kind of reinforces this negative view of, of minority groups and leads people to be a little, this doesn't necessarily lead people to be racist, but it reinforces and galvanizes racist people and their beliefs. It's a concerning and terrifying worldview that is unfortunately not unique. Meanwhile, in Washington, Senator Chris Murphy pointed out that these shootings are highlighting another very disturbing trend. We also just need to ask some deeper questions about why people in America are just so unhappy and so alone that they would resort to violence this regularly and this casually. There is also an, ex an anxiety, a fearfulness in this nation. And earlier today, we heard from former First Lady Michelle Obama, who said she wants to see more Americans demanding action to curb gun violence. I hope and pray that that at some point enough becomes enough. Um, what but is their point? Uh, you know, we wondered that throughout our entire presidency. Michelle we are Obama. the only developed country on the planet where its citizens can have unfettered access to firearms. Mm -hmm. um, that is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and more of us have to feel strongly about it. And here we are talking about all of this exactly 24 years ago to the day when 12 teenage students and one teacher were brutally murdered in a shooting at Columbine High School in Colorado. With that, let's get smarter with the help of our lead off panel this evening. Former New York prosecutor and civil rights attorney Charles Coleman. Frank Figluzzi, former FBI assistant director for counterintelligence. And Ryan Bussey, a former firearms executive who helped build one of the world's most iconic gun companies. He is now a senior advisor at the gun safety organization Giffords. And he wrote Gunfight, My Battle Against the Industry That Radicalized America. Ryan, you were the first person I wanted to talk to tonight. When you look at these shootings, what do they tell you about gun culture and the climate in this country today? Well, thanks for having me on, Stephanie. And, and um, as much as I appreciate being on with you, I wish it wasn't this regular. Um, you know, what it tells me is this is not a surprise, right? We have a system, that, a political system that profits on fear and conspiracy and hatred and it's wound around a firearms industry that helps propagate that because fear and intimidation also sells firearms now. We put about 56 to 57 million new firearms into the United States market in the last three years. People are obviously very fearful, many of them irrationally, many of them as the grandson of the of the guy from Kansas City says they're, you know, they are this sort of fear and conspiracy is being stoked with their media. And they have a gun setting there and, and they're ready to use it. And I'm really not shocked that these things are happening. I'm shocked that they're not happening even more regular than they already are. 
Frank, think about when we were young, the amount of mistaken doorbells we rang, how many times we got lost in cars with our friends, even pranks we intentionally pulled. Things are completely different now. Beyond just the sheer number of guns, what is it that's making people respond to just mistakes with gunfire? Stephanie, I think many Americans have allowed themselves, permitted themselves to be programmed, programmed through social media, through the cable news, television they watch all day and all night through their echo chambers, rabbit holes that they are stuck in seeking affirmation from each other. And the, the politicians, as has just been said, the politicians and the gun lobby is more than happy to feed that programming because it's for-profit programming. And so, you know, the words fear been meant, has been mentioned. Fear is driving this, but it's an irrational fear. We're now seeing the kind of inner-city crime that people have almost become numb to go to the suburbs as people shoot each other for nonsensical reasons. And where is that fear coming from? It's programming. Crime, violent crime is going to get you. It's way up. The facts don't seem to matter, by the way. Jim Jordan, of course, felt, uh, held a, a, a hearing in Manhattan claiming that, you know, crime is out of control there. The facts don't seem to justify that. But nonetheless, that's what we're being fed. People uh, of other races are out to get you. We accept that. We get fed that. And so when that doorbell rings or the basketball comes into your yard, your first response is to pull that gun, which you're now alluded, uh, alluded, uh, allowed to have without permit or training. You pull it, you don't know how to use it, and you start killing innocent people. It's a, it's a programming that's occurring. The deprogramming question is much tougher to answer. It's going to take a long time to get out of this hole. And the first problem you mentioned, inner city gun violence that we're numb to. We shouldn't be. Charles, last night, April Ryan was here, and she said something chilling that has been on my mind for the last 24 hours, and I want to share it with you. Watch this. I think about this as a parent. My older 20-year-old daughter, who will be 21, has gone to pick up her younger sister, who's 15, several times from white communities. And it, it really makes a parent shudder. Like, could this really happen? There is a syndrome now in this nation with hair trigger justice. We heard the grandson of the alleged shooter of Ralph Yarl talk about why these incidents take on a different meaning in the black community, especially for black men. Absolutely, Stephanie. I think in order for America to ever be what it can, it has to be honest about what it is. And the truth when you're talking about what it is is that violence is embedded in America's DNA. Racism is another thing that we have to deal with as being embedded in America's DNA. And these two things, when you add in the element that Frank mentioned around profit, they create the type of storm that we're dealing with with respect to quick hair trigger justice that April talked about. And this is the type of thing that allows for me to say with confidence and with clarity that the way that I navigate spaces, the way that people who look like me navigate spaces is simply different. And it's an understanding that America has to deal with and an inequity that America has to deal with if it is ever to get to another place.